I'm okay, you know. I think when when the movie is uh, something you're proud of, yes. and when people seem to be responding warmly, it, it, the, the day goes a lot quicker. I feel like responding warmly is um, an are. understatement. <laughs> Kim Holcomb, King TV, Seattle. Um, so it's true that you sang an Elton John song twice to get into the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. This is true. Go back in time and say to that Terran, this is gonna happen now. His response would be? I wouldn't tell him. Why? Because of the butterfly effect. So if I told him, I might do things differently and it might not have happened. I'd probably start fancying myself a little bit, wouldn't I? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, know, you better let me in because I'm gonna be singing this in a film about Elton. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I would have done that. But um, I don't know what he'd say. He, um, I think it would probably make him quite scared. Yeah. I think so, yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't know that I would have felt I could do it at 17. At 29, I'm a little more ready for it, I think. Did you feel like you could do it though from the beginning or did you have to have conversations no, with No, I your... did, yeah, I yeah. did, I did. I felt, I felt that there's something of, Elton says to me, we're cut from the same cloth. And, and I don't, I, I can't speak to that because he's a genius, um, but I, but I, I do notice parallels in our personality and those parallels I think have served me quite well in portraying him. What do you think is a weirder experience to be you singing Elton John in front of Elton John or Elton John to be watching you singing Elton John and playing himself? I think it's got to be weirder for him. Yeah. I think seeing a movie about your life has got to be weird. Yeah. You know, really weird. Um, but for me, you know, performing with him and, you know, looking you know, not many, lots of people have seen Elton play the piano. Not many people have seen him play it from the angle I did the other night at Cannes. Right. <laughs> well, lots have, but you know, but comparatively few. And I, um, I took a moment up there to kind of just soak, soak it, soak it in. Yeah. Amazing. There's a part in the movie where, of course, he gets very excited at the prospect of making 25 quid a week. Yeah. What was your first job where you felt like, okay, I made it? In retrospect, it might not have been for much money or much glory, but you felt like this is, I'm onto something here. I think the first professional role I got I, was when I was 22, and I, I, I played a, a supporting role in a, in a six-hander play at the National Theatre. And I remember getting the call from my agent, Lindy King, saying that I'd got the part. And, and that was a real whoa, you know, because the National Theatre is such a such an institution here. Yeah. And um, to, to get that role, it was within a play that was led by Julie Walters and Helen McCrory and Rory Kinnear. And I, I felt very bowled over by that. Yeah. Who plays you in a movie someday? If you could have anybody. A movie about my life. About your life, would the Taron Edgerton. Really, really, really uninteresting. The budget <laughs> would be tiny. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't. I can't answer that. Would know. it be a musical? Um, oh God, I don't know what you'd, what would you tell the story of? There's no interesting story to tell there, really. Well, then you've got to get out there and create some more. What, create some havoc? Yes. I think the, the, the movies I'm in are about as interesting as I get, sadly. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. <laughs> thank you so much. Congratulations. How are you doing? Seattle, good to meet Beautiful you. Beautiful earrings. Oh, oh gorgeous. thank you. Thank you. I thrifted them. I just yeah. had a big conversation Did with you? Bryce about the ever oh, well, you done. everything. Well done, you. Thank you very much. Ten points go to you. <laughs> Where are the good charity? They're called charity shops here mm -hmm. in London, right? There's one really good one uh, in, up in Hampstead. Um, it's an ox farm. In Hampstead, there's a lot of really rich lot of wealthy people up there yeah uh, and so that place has got like you're like oh, there's a vintage Saint Laurent suit or like all these mad things that people have just like gotten rid of so the that's the one to go to best treasure hunt in the right. world I love it so much are you guys ready okay uh, obviously for Elton John very young age he realized his musical abilities but what was the first form of expression that spoke to you in your life um, I, suppose I was acting since I was you know 10 years old so that's kind of where I first started to kind of work out my kind of creative expression, I suppose. At age 10, how do you know? I look at my own kids and they haven't quite found a passion like that yet. Like, mm -hmm. how did you know this is this is something I can do and want to do? Because I just wanted to do it all the time. Yeah. And wanted to get better at it and really enjoy doing it and felt alive and electric when I was doing it. So I think that's that was the sign for me. Yeah. 
What role does music play in your life? A uh, huge part of my life, music. I, I, can, I listen to everything. There's not a lot that I don't, apart from really heavy metal stuff, I'm not hugely into that. But, you know, in terms of this film, obviously I've been immersed in Elton's music. Right. But it's always a big part of me prepping for a job is listening to lots of different music and how I unwind at the end of the day. I find it really affects my mood. How would you unwind from Bodyguard? What music would soothe you after shooting those scenes? Um, classical music would do it, really. But, I mean, mostly I was just just getting the sleep in between one day and the next. <laughs> right, so whatever could put you to sleep. Yeah. A little white noise, probably, yeah. sometimes. What was your experience with or extent of singing prior to Rocket Man? Um, apart from in the shower, very limited. Um, I, sang, I sang once on stage before. Um, I'd sang a little bit of a song on stage, but you know, singing's not my, my strong point, so it was quite a terrifying task to engage with. What do you tell yourself in your mind on a day that you have to shoot a scene like that? Focus on the acting, focus on the storytelling. Don't think about how my voice sounds. Focus on what it's doing emotionally. Yeah. When you watch the movie back now, are you pleased with, I mean, you sounded great well, to the novice ear. Thank God for auto-tune. <laughs> <laughs> did they auto-tune you? They did I'm not. sure they must have tweaked it. <laughs> um, in the film, uh, Elton is thrilled to be making 25 quid a week for one of his jobs. What was your job where you felt like, oh, yes, like I'm, I'm making it now, even if it was just for a small amount of money? When did you feel like I've arrived? I'm still waiting on that <laughs> checkpoint. Um, I think people think actors get paid a lot more than they do. <laughs> How about just the feeling that you got inside? Like, now this is legitimate, this is what I'm meant to be doing. Um, I don't know. I think the first time, the first time I got cast as, as Romeo, I was 21 to play at the Globe Theatre in London. Yeah. That was like, okay, wow, I'm doing this. This is cool. In my mind, I always imagine that if you can do Shakespeare at the Globe or at Stratford, then is everything else easy after that? No, it gets harder. <laughs> <laughs> so you do have uh, you, the, your award, Golden Globe. Game of Thrones ends this week, same week that you're doing press for this. If you could go back like a dozen years and tell yourself this was all going to happen, what would your response have been? Um, I wouldn't have believed it at all, no. <laughs> I'm still trying to catch up with it. <laughs> what do you hope audiences get out of this? Um, a number of things. I hope they get to see... <sighs> I suppose Elton's, Elton's outlook on life. You get to see this film, you get to see all the kind of the good and bad things that have happened to him, the hardships he's faced. And, and now I see this 72-year-old man who's still at the top of his game, who still has the most positive, beautiful outlook on life despite all the bad things that happened to him. Um, I think that's something that's really great you're going to gain from this film, is that you can keep going and keep succeeding despite how many setbacks you get. Of it, I know you've mentioned that it was fun playing dress up in this yes, movie. You yes, got to certainly. Um, and I had to also mention, you're doing a whole consignment thing right now. Oh, yes. Which I bring up because I do a franchise called Thrifting Thursday. So I love that you're promoting this. Everything that I'm wearing currently is yes. you too. What are yes. you? Okay. Yes. What's the best thing that you have consigned so far? Like favorite gotten? thing? Yes. Um, oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff. I'm really excited about my premiere dress for my the UK premiere, which is happening tomorrow night. Yes, I will see you there. I'm very excited, yes. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that for me, it's uh, because I, I got into this place in, in my career when doing press and stuff like that where I was like, you know what, I'm not going to diet for press anymore. Like, no one's asking me to be skinnier in movies. Like, I'm not going to try to have a different body on the red carpet just so I can fit into the clothes. I'll buy clothes that fit me. How about that? Love it. And, um, and so that was great until... I did actually go through like a full press tour and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is too, this is too much. This is excessive. This is not sustainable. And these are things that I can't wear again and again and again. And yes, I could resell it, but I'm just perpetuating it, you know, right. by, by making the purchase in the first place and, and, um, and kind of advertising that in a way. And I felt really, really, really conflicted. And so I um, discovered, um, you know, consignment stores and specifically, which has been awesome for me. And I'm not like, the, the, I don't have like a deal with them or whatever, but like the real real yeah. has been really a great place for me to go shopping online. And, um, and it, uh, I realized as I was nearing this press tour, I was like, oh my gosh, a huge percentage of my stuff is actually from the real real. Why don't I just do a hundred percent? And, um, 
it's been really wonderful. I really love it. I love that you're doing that. Yeah. Thank you for joining the movement. <laughs> ah, totally, totally. It's the, it's the only way really also to wear labels because it's like, you know, to buy, I, I mean, designers will hate me. I'm like, to buy something at cost. Just, I mean, <laughs> Crazy. Like, what, yeah, why? <laughs>